How are you doing? If you're new here, my name is Ocean. I am 29, trans mask, and I make videos on being queer, and I also make art on my Instagram. Recently, I put up a question on Instagram about questions people had for trans people, and the most common thing that came up was around trans sex. So I thought I would start a series all about trans sex education, and this is the first video. The topic of trans people having sex and trans bodies is really controversial because rightly so, we don't want people thinking about us naked all the time. But there are a lot of people who want to know these things because they are trans themselves or they are dating trans people or they just want to be prepared for when it comes up. I'm going to try and do this with as much sensitivity and gentleness as possible and just know that it's coming from a trans person with good intentions. So let's get started. Today we're going to be focusing on terminology which is kind of like the foundation of good manners and sex with trans and queer people in general. When I say terminology, I mean what we are calling our body parts, what we're calling our partner's body parts, what words we're using to describe different things. And you might be wondering why this even matters. It matters because a really important part of sex is communication. We want everyone involved to feel heard and seen and comfortable and when gender dysphoria comes into the mix it's really important that we are using the words that make people feel good. In this video I'll be using a mix of slang words as well as biological anatomy and the scientific words just so there's no misunderstanding. Just know that it's coming from a good place and I'm not trying to make anyone dysphoric. First thing is understanding that all trans bodies are different. Got people on hormone treatment or no hormone treatment, people who have started surgical procedures, people who have had all the surgical procedures you can imagine. There are so many different types of gender affirming surgeries and treatments. It's not just about having breast, no breast, or a penis or a vulva. The spectrum is so much more diverse than you can imagine. I say this as someone who does the Body Like Mine project, people submit their pictures of their bodies to me for me to draw and I've seen so many different variations of what trans bodies can look like so you cannot tell what a trans person has in their pants, under their shirt, just by looking at them or just by talking to them. Another thing is that a trans person's body might change over the period that you know them. People's bodies change over time and if you've met someone who's at the beginning of their hormone therapy treatment, their body and their face and their mannerisms might change completely within a year or two. I guess people are kind of like those flip books that you have as a kid where you can change the outfits of people, where on top and the bottom you can have loads of different kinds of configurations of bodies. So some people might feel really indifferent to words and that they don't really matter. A lot of trans men or trans masculine people in porn use the word pussy and they find it really empowering or they don't mind it as much. Then you get other trans masculine people who can't stand the word, don't want to hear it, read it, don't want to even think about it in relation to their own bodies. Other words people might use are junk, hole, front hole, back hole, boy pussy, girl dick. Some people refer to their genitals as their bits. I've heard gock, which is girl cock, and bussy, which is boy pussy, but then there's complications with a lot of cis gay men use that to refer to their buttholes. There's a lot of different things people use to refer to their body parts. It's also important to note that people's feelings can change over time. So for example, before I had top surgery, I really had a lot of dysphoria around my chest. I didn't want to refer to it as anything other than my chest. But now that I've had top surgery, I use the phrase titties a lot. Not only do I use it to refer to my chest now, but I use it to refer to my chest back then as well. In the first like five or six years of my transition, I also didn't like to refer to my genitals as anything, but as I have grown a bit and my body has changed with hormones and surgeries, I've become a lot more comfortable using words that I previously thought were really dysphoria inducing. My biggest tip in this is to ask every individual person that you're with 
what words they prefer to use for their own bodies. Normalize having these conversations about what people like and what people don't like rather than just assuming from the offset. So you might say something like, what words do you like to use to refer to your body? Or what do you like to call your body parts? Is there a term you prefer to use for your chest or your genitals? If you've never done this before, it might feel a bit weird, but the more you do it, the more normal it becomes. Try to go into these conversations without any preconceived notions or ideas. Even if you're going into a physical relationship with someone and you don't know what their body looks like, if you open up the conversation about what words people prefer to use, they might just tell you what their body looks like or show you. Some people might not want to talk about it, some people might not want to go there, some people might be really open about it, some people might surprise you. It can be a really lovely experience when you are open to the different dynamics that you might have. If you feel comfortable doing so, feel free to leave the words that you prefer to use or different words that you've heard in the comments. If you have any other tips or bits of advice that you want other people to know, also feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd really like to make this a discussion and a conversation that we can all contribute to. I don't know everything, this is just my experience and my input, so the more the merrier. If you prefer written formats, I have a blog post about this on my website, which I'll link in the description. Like I said, this is the start of a series, so if there are any other videos or topics that you want me to cover, please let me know as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.